Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'm Srimati Sridhar with the World Bank Group and delighted to be with Shamaran Abed. He is the Executive Director for BRAC International. Shamaran, thank you so much for joining our program. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to start off by learning a little bit more about BRAC International. I know you're one of the few large southern-based development NGOs. You started in Bangladesh. You're now active in over 11 countries. Can you talk a bit about how your approach is different given your history? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, as you said, we started in Bangladesh a little over half a century ago uh, and we scaled uh, our work in Bangladesh. We work across the entire gamut of development interventions. So we work in health and education and gender and human rights and microfinance and increasingly, obviously, on, on climate. Mm. Uh, we work in both development settings and humanitarian settings and also in the nexus of humanitarian development. So we have a holistic approach to development and we try to do things as integrated as possible. Okay. But for the last 20 years, uh, we've been working outside Bangladesh. So a big focus of our work increasingly is on Sub-Saharan Africa. But we also work in several countries in Asia, including places like Afghanistan and Myanmar. Um, we have two types of work with BRAC International. One is we do direct implementation ourselves. So we're in about 10 or 11 countries, as you said, we have country offices that do direct program delivery. And then another six or seven countries where we're trying to work through partners, right? And especially we're trying to work with governments. In terms of how our approach is different, I mean, given where we come from and given the work that we've done, uh, we're very focused on community-based work. So uh, we are, as I said, we have a lot of staff on the ground doing work with communities. We're not, we don't do through partner organizations. We've grown out of the work with the communities. So, uh, you know, some of the things that we believe in that are very important to Brack in our work are things like, you know, our role in development is to catalyze people's own potential to change their own lives. So we don't see ourselves as being able to develop people. We think that people have to be developed themselves. Uh, and so our role is that of a facilitator and, and to make sure that people can be active participants in their own development. That's a very big part of what we believe in and that's something we try to do across all of our work in all of the countries. Yeah. Um, a big focus on women. Mm. Of course, women as catalysts of change because of course everything we look at in terms of, of issues, poverty, climate, conflict, uh, put the poorest of the poor and who are disproportionately women are always the hardest hit. Uh, and so we want to see how we can move them from being the victims of this to being the catalysts of, of development. And that's been a big success story for BRAC because when you invest in women, you invest in the household and you invest in the community. So that's a big area of our work. Uh, as I've already mentioned, we try to do things as holistic, as integrated as possible. And the last thing I'd say is uh, we are very much a scale player. Um, there are a lot of small NGOs all over the world that do some great work and, and they're ne they do niche type of work. That's not something that we believe in. As, as, so the ethos of our organization is, if we can solve problems for one village or one community, we should be able to solve, solve it for the whole country and potentially for the globe, right? So if we find sustainable solutions, we try to make them as scalable as possible and try to scale as much as possible so that we can, we can impact as many people as we can. So ultimately, um, our single bottom line, if you will, is to have impact at scale. So I want to get to your efforts in scaling up in just, a, in just a moment. But before that, you were on a panel earlier this week at our spring meetings, yeah. and you said something which I found very, uh, very striking. You said that development is not something we can give. Development is something people must take. Yeah. Can you explain what you meant to me by that? Yeah, so uh, a lot of this thinking comes from um, Brack's early work in the 1970s. So the, the, the founder of Brack and the, and the, the founding generation were very influenced by the teachings of a Brazilian educator and philosopher called Paulo Freire. And Paulo Freire wrote this book called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. It's a very intense and th you know, thick book that nobody reads and I wouldn't suggest anybody read. But, but the main idea was that, that you can't look at yourself as benefactors and the people as beneficiaries and that you give them things and you give and then you develop people. You've got to look at people as active participants in their own development. They have okay. to own it. They have to have the agency to own their development. And that's the only way development becomes sustainable. Mm. So our role, therefore, as I said, became about how do we catalyze people's ability to do things for themselves? Mm. Of course, they need skills and opportunities and resources and assets. Of course, we will provide that. But really, it's about giving them the enabling conditions under which they can develop themselves. So that's why I said yesterday that in our philosophy, 
development is not something we give. Develop is something people take. Mm. And our, our role in the world is to catalyze that. Right. So it's a sense of almost empowering exactly. people. Exactly. Um, so what do you think needs to be done to ensure that there is development at scale when we look at some of the more vulnerable populations? Yeah. Yeah, so as, as we've been saying, I mean, the, the, the issues that we're dealing with are only getting bigger and more complicated, right? Um, you know, the COVID pandemic hit the poorest very hard. The climate issue is hitting poor people all across the world very hard, especially in the developing world, which is not uh, the part of the world that is polluting, but it's the part of the world, it's the part of the world that's actually facing the brunt of it. Um, and conflict as well. I mean, if you look at the Russia-Ukraine war, I mean, the increase in rises of prices across the world, energy prices and food prices, hitting the poorest the hardest. So what we've been saying is, you know, let's put the focus back on the plight of the poorest. It's, uh, it's easy to say, let's look at it from the lens of conflict or climate or COVID or other crises. But at the end of the day, however you get into it, you'll ultimately find it's the same people that are always the worst affected. So how do we keep the focus on the poorest people in the world, um, help them to, to get on sustainable pathways out of poverty, get on to livelihoods that are resilient to things like climate and conflict and things like that. And there is a lot of work that we have done and others have done that shows that if you do development programming well, and you address both the economic and social vulnerabilities of poor people, and you build on their own agency, right? They can move out of poverty, right? So, and there is a whole lot of evidence that supports that, right? So right. it's not just Brack saying, look, our programs are great. Uh, We've done work, lots of other organizations have done work, and people have studied these programs for many years. Mm. So we're in a position now where we know what works, right? right. And, and you know, there's so much wealth in the world um, that there are resources available if we put it in, onto the right things. Mm. Governments in the developing world already spend a large percentage of their budget mm. on anti-poverty programs. Unfortunately, some of those programs are badly targeted and ba badly designed. So if we can just get governments to better design their programs and better target the poorest of the poor, potentially even before spending more money or throwing more money at the program, we could have much better impact. Right. Talking so, a lot about kind of the human capital in a sense, exactly. right? How we unlock potential. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, I mean, so our, our sort of message has been, let's put the focus back on the poorest people. Let's look at what works and let's figure out ways to scale them. And the scale that will be needed to achieve SDG 1, which we will not achieve by 2030, but let's say even if you want to achieve it in the next decade after that, will require the kind of scale that only governments can do. So our role increasingly is to support governments to scale evidence-backed programs that we know have a good positive impact on poverty. Uh, and from our point of view, we will play whatever role governments need us to play, whether that's as a technical assistance provider, as a capacity building partner, as an implementation partner. Uh, but it really the government that has to scale these programs and own these programs. Right. Well, Shamran, uh, some amazing work that you're doing. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing more about the work of BRAC International. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all so much for tuning in. That was Shamran Abed, Executive Director of BRAC International.